Interstate highways travel through many different regions of the U.S., with massive cities like I-95 in New York to empty rural areas like I-70 in Utah, which goes 110 miles with no services. Most of the time, interstates were designed to reach as many large cities as possible to connect them to other cities, so it was mapped out in a way to allow for population to be along it. As well as this, new developments continue to pop up along interstate exits for easy transportation and economic opportunity. So this relationship between these highways and populations begs the question, which U.S. interstate has the highest amount of population living along or near it? So today I did my own research to answer that question, so let's find out. Before this video starts though, make sure you do subscribe. We make geography and city content like this every week. So if that type of stuff interests you, please consider clicking the subscribe button. It helps me out a ton. Thank you. To answer this question, I used the NASA Population Estimator to draw regions of population along each interstate, and my ruling was pretty simple. I'd follow the boundaries of the interstate and include an area around 10 to 15 miles outward. If it went through a major metropolitan area then, the entire city would be included, not just the 15 miles along the highway. It's worth noting, in many cases this was not very exact, and I put very little brain power into drawing the lines, because they weren't very fun. So every number here would be give or take 100,000 people. But my point stands and it gives an accurate idea of our list. So with that out of the way, I want to go over the top 7 by total population as well as density. So in 7th place would be Interstate 90. So Interstate 90 is the nation's longest by total length at 3,020 miles. This means from a population standpoint, it isn't carrying its weight being this low on the list. The highway starts in Seattle, being the third largest metro it passes. Moving east, it takes a relatively unpopulated route, though it reaches Spokane, and the cities of Missoula, Butte, Bozeman, and Billings in Montana. The next two large cities are Rapid City and Sioux Falls, and it then pushes east into Madison, Rockford, and Chicago. Chicago is the largest metro it passes through, and it then continues on to Cleveland and then into the cities in New York, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, and Albany, before finally ending in Boston, its second largest metro. This ends up at a total population of 27.48 million living along the highway, which as a comparison would be over double that of I-40, which has just 11.56 million living along it, passing through no major metropolitan areas. Unsurprisingly, Interstate 90's worst traffic zone is within Chicago, where it passes directly along the downtown. Moving on to 6th place, we have Interstate 75, the 1,786 mile route that takes a north-south trip through the southeast and midwest regions. In the south, it begins in Miami, giving it the population of that entire metro, before moving straight west and traveling up along the Gulf Coast through Fort Myers and Tampa. Continuing north, it's relatively unpopulated until Macon and, obviously, Atlanta, which is the largest metropolitan area the highway passes. It continues north through Chattanooga and Knoxville and some mountainous regions before Lexington and Cincinnati, another large metro. Moving up, it reaches Toledo, Detroit, the third biggest metro, and moves into northern Michigan before ending in Sault Ste. Marie. The highway passes through good areas of high-density development and large cities, especially in the north and south. The total population is then 29.14 million, with over 16 million of that coming from the three largest metros. The population density would also be much higher, with 16,310 people per mile of highway. The highway likely serves as Atlanta's overall most important, with a great deal of traffic problems between the airport and the downtown. Moving on, we have Interstate 15 in 5th place. This is our first western highway, traveling 1,433 miles, basically from border to border. It begins in San Diego, then traveling through the LA metro, being the first and second largest cities. It then moves up through Las Vegas, the third largest metro, and into Utah. In northern Utah, it passes the Salt Lake City area and into Idaho and Montana, where it's relatively underpopulated. It then ends in the empty North Plains of Montana at the Canadian border. The highway passes through the west, which is defined by empty rural areas. Despite this, it has the highest density so far, at 20,558 people per mile of roadway, and then a population of 29.46 million. This is obviously centered in the far south because Los Angeles and San Diego account for well over half of the total population. And it does bring up the weakness in my calculations that come from the largest metropolitan areas. But we move on nonetheless. In fourth place, we stay in the west with Interstate 5. This is a coastal highway that moves from border to border along the Pacific, using that coast to its advantage. In the south, it passes the same two cities as I-15, with San Diego and Los Angeles, the third and first largest on its length. Moving north, it takes a more unpopulated route through California's Central Valley, really only seeing Sacramento before moving to the north. Through the mountains, it sees Redding and Medford, 
but then it reaches the Cascadia Megalopolis, where it begins passing through every city, with Eugene, Salem, Portland, Vancouver, Washington, and into the north, with Olympia, Seattle, the second largest city, and then into the far north, where it ends. I think the most interesting area here is in the Central Valley, where it loses over 1 million people by taking the most rural possible route. Despite this, the population is up at 33.94 million people, and yet again is the densest highway so far. This I find unsurprising because of how it takes advantage of the coast, as I said before. The highway is categorized by high traffic in the Los Angeles metro, where it passes directly through the downtown and is jammed up all day and all night, basically. Moving to our top three, we have Interstate 10, the southernmost cross-country highway, traveling 2,899 miles. This is the third straight that passes through Los Angeles, with that being its largest metro. Moving east, it then traverses the desert, which is obviously underpopulated. But it finds Phoenix, the third largest city on its course, which is growing very fast. And Tucson is also located to the south. Continuing on, it moves through El Paso and into Texas for a long time, meaning San Antonio and then Houston, the second largest city, which is also growing at very high rates. Moving into the eastern U.S., it follows the Gulf Coast through New Orleans and into Mississippi and Alabama. In Florida, then, it passes Tallahassee and finally ends in beautiful Jacksonville. Though it moves through some empty western regions, it's a major interstate route through several large American cities. It goes through downtown Los Angeles, downtown Phoenix, and in Houston, it's called the Katy Freeway, a notable area for the interstate system. The total population is 40.78 million, though the density is finally a bit lower because of its length, at 15.8 thousand per mile of roadway. Moving to our top two, we have Interstate 80, our final cross-country highway, which moves 2,899 miles across the country, being the second longest as well. In the west, it begins in San Francisco, the third largest metro along the trip. It then finds Sacramento before moving through the empty Great Basin. The entire western half is empty. It sees Salt Lake City, but after that it's very empty again until Omaha. And from there, it's still fairly rural until the second largest metro, Chicago. Its numbers get greatly boosted by the city, and it continues on through South Bend, Toledo, and Cleveland. From there, it sees yet another rural region through the Allegheny Plateau and the Poconos, but it ends in New York City, which one more time absolutely explodes its numbers. I always saw I-80 as a very rural interstate, and even though it is, it's the only interstate in the country to pass through Chicago and New York, and it's also very long. So despite it being one of the most rural cross-country highways, it's got the second highest population, at 45.85 million, but the density is way lower, at 15.8 thousand per mile of roadway. Finally, in first place, to nobody's surprise, it's Interstate 95. This 1,919 mile route moves up the east coast, being probably the most notable highway in the nation, as it reaches basically every populated city along this part of the country. In the south, it begins in Miami and heads up the highly populated Florida coastline to Jacksonville. Something most people don't know, though, is that after this, it takes the very rural route until, really, Richmond, passing between most large cities. Moving up from Richmond, though, it hits D.C., the second largest metro, then into Baltimore, into Wilmington, and into Philadelphia, the third largest metro. After that, New York City, the largest metro. This is a stretch of basically constant development, where you could get off of the highway wherever you want and have stuff to do. North of New York, then, it follows the coast until Providence, and it then hits Boston. This is the final major city before it gets into the unpopulated regions of Maine. In Maine, it passes the whole state before hitting the Canadian border. And really, there's not much to be said here. It has high traffic volumes, serves very important purposes, and is the highest populated at 51.08 million. Also, to nobody's surprise, it's by far the densest interstate for population, with 26.6 thousand individuals per mile of roadway. That could be the most important interstate in the country, and this list can help prove that. Interstate 95 serves over 51 million people and countless commercial uses, boosting the economy with efficient travel through the region. This helps us know what kinds of uses each highway possesses, because if you think about your life, you probably have a home highway you use frequently. Each of these interstates would be that for somebody, being a way to commute, visit family, or connect to the outside world. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members this week, Bunny Lover Me 2 Hono Shukin, Brock Sanders, Steve Priestman, SB Wilder, Florida Jake, Sir JC17, Alex Williams, Makita Martinov, Kurt Ainsley, Jerome McCall, KMS162, JL, Bryzen, Rosebud4, Darkbird, Big Pasty, Wolfling73, Snyder Schwein, Benjamin Whitings, Ryan Devins, and Haas of the Wolf. I appreciate you all so much. You've done so much to help me and my channel.
If you want to become a member, the link is down in the description below. After Christmas or around then, I'm going to try and start making some GeoGuessr videos. So if you want to see those over the next few months, become a member today. Thank you very much.